Hey guys, welcome to the Daily Word Bible Study, a plain and simple book by book, chapter by chapter, and verse by verse study through the entire Bible. We are in Isaiah chapter 10. We're going to get right to it. And again, keep this in mind. One of the awesome things about reading the writings of the prophets is that we have the foundational prophecies of Jesus, not only first coming, but second coming, and other prophecies. So let's get into it. Isaiah chapter 10. Isaiah chapter 10. Uh, here we go. So remember, he's just pronounced judgment on Israel. And to be clear, when we talk about Israel in this setting, we're talking about the northern kingdoms versus Judah, the southern kingdoms. The northern kingdoms, capital is Samaria. So you, you hear a lot of some, the, the term or name Samaria. And then, of course, he hasn't gotten yet to focusing on Israel. He will. Um, the timeline, remember, during this time, uh, right around this time, Israel is being conquered by the Assyrian nation, empire. So this happens about 80 years before the fall of Jerusalem. Um, so, and again, that's why God is giving these prophecies and understand that when he says Israel, that that's what the context, that, that's what he's referring to, the northern kingdom. Now, Jerusalem is yet to come, the fall and we'll get to that. Isaiah will definitely get to that. All right, excuse me. Okay, here we go. Chapter 10, verse 1. Bold to those enacting crooked state, uh, statutes in writing oppressive laws. I'm amazed, and I know that I am taking liberties here. I'm amazed at those who call themselves God-fearing, Bible-believing, that ignore verses like this as it applies to them, meaning, let's say, conservative. Now, I don't oftentimes get on progressive slash liberals, and I'm going to tell you why. They have long ago forsaken God in favor of humanism the humanist philosophy. But conservatives, Christians who have attached themselves to the conservative bandwagon, um, compromise biblical principles in favor of promoting a conservative ideology. And, and you give a whole lot of what they call mulligans, right, to ally with people who don't believe the Bible. Now, okay, so enough said on that, but I just wanted to rant on that. You guys notice what he says here. Woe to those enacting crooked statutes and writing oppressive laws. So, I mean, you kind of go back to uh, slavery and Jim Crow could never have existed without uh, the um, complicity of the, the church, the Christian church, Jim Crow laws, all of that, okay? Other laws they hate, that they, they're going to ignore in favor of allying with, you know, people, um, Republicans, okay? So that's what I mean. All right, so if you're going to say, anyway, verse 2. It says, to keep the poor from getting a fair trial and to deprive the afflicted among many people of, ju of justice. Now, let's stop and think about this for a moment here. First of all, woe to those enacting crooked statutes. And it, again, so again, I am so much criticizing the evangelicals slash conservative because you claim a moral standard you claim a biblical standard or to you because you look at what you ignore 
you 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 have certain political hot topics but notice and i said this before how many times have god mentioned the poor look read this again to keep the poor from getting a fair trial and to deprive the afflicted among my people of justice so just let that stew okay let that kind of you know and then compare that to what you think the way you see people today okay so this is one of the this is one of the again i'm going to move on because i i can get so involved I, you know uh get into this <laughs> but anyway but again, notice what God says as far as what's on his mind. Notice what he didn't mention. Then let's think about that for a moment. Notice what he didn't mention. And then compare that to what evangelical slash conservatives think as, as they teach and preach that you would think that God is falling off his throne. Okay. Verse 2. To keep the poor from getting a fair trial and deprive the afflicted among my people of justice so that widows can be their spoils and they can plunder the fatherless so now the fatherless in this context could be you could be fatherless for many reasons your father passed away in war or passed away because of disease or death and yes even judgment of god but okay verse three what will you do on the day of punishment when devastation comes from far away? Who will you run to for help? Where will you leave your wealth? There will be nothing to do except crouch among the prisoners or fall among the slave, uh, slain. And in all of this, his anger is not removed and his hand is still raised to strike. In other words, notice We've seen this this phrase come up in chapter nine that what God is not relenting. In other words, judgment is coming to Israel. Um, verse five says, "Roll to Assyria, the rod of my anger, the staff in their hands is my wrath." Now, this is basically simply saying that God uses various evil nations to punish Israel. Ever since they're crossing the Jordan, this has happened. Okay? Um, but notice uh, when he says that they are the rod of my anger. So in other words, God is using the Assyrian. Now the Assyrian Empire was one of the most, they, they were a mighty empire at the time, like Egypt. The Assyrians were most brutal most brutal they were most a most brutal uh people one of the most brutal that you can ever probably as an empire uh, verse six i will send him against a godless nation i will command him and go against a people destined for my rage to take spoil to plunder and to trample them down like clay in the streets. So this is again the God is going to send this even more wicked nation to judge his godless people. All right, but keep this in mind that Israel is very godless. The Israel were wicked. They were evil. Uh, verse seven, but this is not what he intends. This is not what he plans. It is intended to destroy and to cut off many nations. For he says, Aren't all my commanders king, kings? Isn't uh, Kalno like Karmish? Karshemish? Karshemish? <laughs> Isn't Hemat like Arpad? Isn't Samaria like Damascus? As my hand seeds the Adajah's kingdom, whose idols exceeded those of Jerusalem and Samaria. And as I did to Samaria and to its idols, 
I'm oh, sorry, as I did to Samaria and its idols, will I not also do to Jerusalem and its idols? So remember, he hasn't forgot about, he hasn't forgot about <laughs> Jerusalem. Uh, we're 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 gonna get to them. All right. Um, it says, but when the Lord finished all His work against Mount Zion and Jerusalem, He will say, "I will punish the king of Assyria for his arrogant acts and his proud look in his eyes, uh, for he did. For he said, I'm sorry. For he said, okay. Let me see if I can shrink this here." Tired of this. All right. Okay. Hope y'all can kind of see that. Uh, nope. All right. All right. All right. Hope y'all can see that. All right. <clears throat> Verse 13. For he said, I have done this by my own strength and wisdom, for I am clever. I abolish the borders of nations and plunder their treasures. Like a mighty warrior, I subjugate the inhabitants. My hands have reached out as if into a nest to seize the wealth of the nations, like one gathered, gathering abandoned eggs. I gather the whole earth. No wing fluttered, no beak open or chirp. Does an ox, does an ox exalt itself above the one who chops with it? Does, um, does the saw magnify itself above the one who saws with it? Now, keep this in mind, he is criticizing the Assyrian for boasting, for failing to realize that the only reason why that they conquer is because of God's decree. So now in their boast, they are bragging that it is because of their own strength, because of their own wisdom that they are doing this thing. And so God is telling them, well, can a saw, right? I mean, in other words, think about a saw or a tool. Um, in this case, a saw that can chop down a tree. Now, you think about a, a big, mighty tree, here's a tool that can cut through it and cut it down, but does the saw does it because of its own wisdom? And that's the criticism that God is saying against the Assyrians. So they fail to acknowledge God in their... Um, they, they fail to acknowledge God. Verse 15, does an axe exalt itself above the one who chops with it? Does the saw magnify itself above the one who saws with it? It would be like a staff uh, raving the one who lifts it. It would be like a rod, lift, a rod lifting a man who isn't wood. Therefore, the Lord God of hosts will inflict an emaciated disease on the well-fed well of Assyria. He will kill in a burning fire under its glory. Israel, Israel's light will become a fire, the holy, the holy one a flame. On the day, on the day will burn up Assyria's thorns and thistles. He will completely destroy the glory of the forests and orchards, as a sick man consumes a person. The remnant of trees, uh, the, remnant, uh, the remaining trees of the forest would be few, so few in number that a child could count them. On that day, on that, on, on that day, the remnant of Israel and the survivors of the house of Jacob will no longer depend on the one who struck them, but they will faithfully depend on the Lord, the Holy One of Israel. The re remnant will return the remnant of Jacob to the mighty God, Israel, even if your people were as numerous as the sand of the sea, only a remnant of them will return. Destruction has been decreed. Justice overflows. For throughout the land, for throughout the land, the Lord God of hosts is carrying out a destruction 
that was decreed. Therefore, the Lord God of hosts says this, my people who dwell in Zion, do not fear Assyria, though he strikes you with the rod and raises his staff over you as an Egyptian did. In just a little while, my wrath will be spent and my anger uh, will turn to their destruction. And the Lord of hosts will brandish a whip against him as he did struck down the as you as when he struck down Midian at the rock of Orbe. That's during the time of Moses. And he will raise his staff over the sea as he did Egypt. Now what is interesting about this um how so, so you have to you have to kind of figure in terms of, in terms of as Israel who is God talking to? Well, it's going to be people of a later time who will be reading this because the people of this time will suffer horribly at the hand of the Assyrian. But but think about this. We're talking about now over a thousand years that have been since the time of Moses that he is referring to. My, my point is to kind of give a timeline or kind of a mindset that, um, notice he said just... Uh, just as Moses raised his staff over Egypt and conquered, um, at, probably, at, as Moses raised his staff over um, the Red Sea and conquered Egypt, now that was over a thousand years from the time of this writing. So again, you look in the future, okay, so like I say, this comfort is not going to be for those who are reading it in this day, okay, but for a later day. All right, uh, verse uh, 27. On that day, his burden will fall from off your shoulders and his yoke from off your neck. The yoke will be broken because of fatness. Now, um, what, a lot of people use this, or, or I should say misuse this term in terms of the, um, I'm using the Holman Christian standard, so it says fatness, but the other uh, scripture says uh, the yoke would be, broken because of the anointing okay because of the anointing um so uh but the idea what what is being communicated the yoke of hardness right against israel the yoke uh of 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 oppression okay that god is going to break that yoke of Assyria, the oppression of Assyria off of Israel. Verse 28, Assyria has come to Ayat and has gone through Maiguan, storing his equipment in uh, Mike Mash. Um, they crossed over at the fort saying, we will spend the night at Gerber, the people of Rama are trembling. Those at Gibla, uh, at Gibla of Saul have fled. Cry aloud, daughter of Gilam. Listen, uh, Laisha, um, Laish, Anath is miserable. Uh, Madmania Mad has fled. Forgive me for again butchering these Hebrew pronunciations. I know I am horribly. Uh, butchering them. The inhabitants of Gibbon have sought refuge. Today he will stand at Nob, shaking his fist at the mountains of the daughters of Zion, the hills of Jerusalem. Look, the Lord God of hosts. Uh, look, the Lord. Um, look, the Lord God of hosts, verse 33 again, will chop off the branches with terrifying power. He, And the tall trees will be cut down and the high trees felled or chopped. Uh, he is clearing the thickets of the forest with an axe. And Lebanon, uh, and Lebanon with its majesty will fall. All right. So the prophecy here, I can say there's a famous scripture when it says that the uh, uh, people take that one verse of scripture. We talk about the anointing being uh, the, the yoke of it will be destroyed because of the anointing. Um, but again, that's talking about what is coming. Now, we're going to get to, I think it's chapter 26. 
in Isaiah where you're going to talk, we're going to see one of the, how God is going to actually destroy the Assyrian army, which is about 185,000 in one night. So we're, we're saved more detail for that. But this is the prophecy where they will come. And you notice he said they're going to look at Jerusalem. They're going to be high hand hardy because and again he's not that they're failing to realize that the only reason why that they're having a great victory against Israel is because God is using them as his arm of judgment all right guys don't forget to like and share this video and subscribe to BP the Bible perspective as always if you have a thought or comment add it to the comment section below all comments are welcome I'll see you in the next study